All right, I'm going to talk about IGF-1, okay, and its contribution to aging. And uh, I'm going to read this off Wikipedia, and um, because I think it's important. So it says it is now widely accepted that signaling through the insulin slash IGF-1 like receptor pathway is a significant contributor to the biological aging process in many organisms. This avenue of research first achieved prominence with the work of Cynthia Kenyon, who showed that mutations in the DAF-2 gene could double the lifespan of the roundworm C. elegans. DAF-2 encodes the worm's unified insulin-slash-IGF-1-like receptor. Insulin-slash-IGF-1-like signaling is concerned from worms to humans. In vitro experiments show that mutations that reduce insulin-slash-IGF-1 signaling have been shown to be accelerate the degenerative aging process and extend lifespan in a wide range of organisms, including Drosophila, Melanogaster, mice, and possibly humans. And note that it says possibly humans, which means that it hasn't been proven. Reduced IGF-1 signaling is also thought to contribute to the anti or to contribute to the anti-aging effects of calorie restriction. But it goes on to say that, nevertheless, the situation in vivo, alive human beings, is definitely different. In fact, IGF-1 deficiency is associated with neurodegenerative disease, cardiovascular diseases, heart failure, and a shorter lifespan. So, many people have this obsession of trying to keep their IGF-1 levels as low as possible. And yet, the research suggests that people that have a very deficiency of IGF-1, which there's many factors which can cause that. Um, there's diseases that can cause this deficiency in IGF-1, but the fact is that when you have a low level of IGF-1, um, it's more closely associated with neurodegenerative diseases, cardiovascular diseases, heart failure, and shorter lifespan. So I don't think that it's wise to try to really lower the amount of IGF in your body by trying to somehow um, lower, you know, bring it down or up based upon what you think is good to eat. You know, some people strictly form their diet based around certain studies and that's how they form their body instead of actually listening to their body. So they're more or less, you know, forming how they eat based upon studies, which, you know, uh, correlation does not imply causation. Just because a study suggests something does not mean, you know, that's the end-all be-all of what they're, what they're looking at. So... The way that I like this, and my strategy is, don't have this fear of IGF-1, okay? But rather, just consume a natural foods diet, and your body will naturally do what it's supposed to do. You know, without trying to get all paranoid and freaked out about, oh, is my IGF-1 level so sky high? And if they're so sky high, then that means I'm going to age faster. And because, you know, it's almost like if people are trying to control every, every little minute detail of what goes on in the body, and they're trying to control every little thing by what they're putting in their mouth. And, you know, that's paranoia. And people really think that by controlling all these different things, that somehow it's going to give them just an extra day or an extra year onto their lifespan, which I think is absurd. You know, it's ridiculous. Nobody knows when they're going to die. I could die tomorrow. You could die tomorrow. So when you're trying to basically extend your lifespan by trying to manipulate how the body works and to try to regulate all these different systems and complicated things in your body, it just it doesn't make any common sense. And uh, there's no science in this. And you know it's just a lot of. Um, hoping that it will occur, you know, hoping that you will slow the aging process down, or, you know, hoping that you're going to live an extra year. But, again, you know, it hasn't been proven that um, IGF-1 is a contributor to aging, 
like it says here. And it has been shown that actually having the deficiency of IGF-1 has been shown to cause diseases that actually the ones that are saying this want to avoid in the first place. So uh, you guys can check that um, out if you want on Wikipedia. So don't have a fear of IGF-1. Just simply eat whole natural foods and you'll be okay. You know, that's, that's what I keep telling people is don't get caught up into all these different things and don't try to base your diet around all these different studies and things because the studies aren't 100% conclusive. There's a lot of um, questions to be answered and uh, it's much wiser and much more um, good to actually listen to your body, to, to, to listen to what you actually need to eat. Some people purposely avoid eating meat um, and drinking raw dairy and eating eggs just for just because they believe that if they eat those foods that somehow it's going to, to make their IGF-1 level skyrocket and cause them to accelerate the aging process and to die sooner, which is stupid, basically, to put it simply. So, you know, don't have this fear because, again, um, you won't be able to become healthier if you have this type of mindset. So, I hope you guys were encouraged with this video and I uh, hope you got something out of it because I realize that it's a really big deal and there's a lot of people that actually avoid eating really good foods like grass-fed, you know, meat and stuff like that because they have this fear of IGF-1. So I think that it needed to be addressed and that's why I've created this video. So if you like the video, please like, favorite, and subscribe and catch me in my next videos.